name's Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today I'm going to do my very best to remove this console clutter from down here. So you can just see it's just a nest of wires and also power cables and stuff down there. So we've got a PlayStation 4 Slim, a Switch and an Xbox One X and what I intend to do is hide them behind the TV so they're no longer on display. And the main reason is because yes it looks messy but as well as that this room is very narrow and by taking up this floor space here it leaves just a walkway going down the middle of the room so I'm hoping when I remove this area here it will just open up the room a bit. So initially when I was doing up this room around must be probably seven years ago now I didn't actually intend to have the consoles in this position here. This is an outside wall so this is we're in an extension right now so that's a nine inch thick wall two bricks thick and I've actually got an empty cupboard in the kitchen for the consoles. So I've still got my PlayStation 2 located there. You can just see the little uh, extensions for the controllers coming through there. But all the consoles at the time were supposed to go in there as well. But I found that there was problems with the wireless signal. So when you go to use the controllers, they were hit and miss. So ideally, it's always best just to have the console next to your TV because then you know you can get 4K on the Xbox just using a standard 1.5 or 2 meter HDMI cable and then it gives you easy access to use the discs and stuff like that as well and also charge your controllers and stuff. So I want to try to neaten this up and basically put everything behind the TV. So let's cut now and see what it ends up looking like. There we have it, a lot more floor space. Well, not really much more floor space, but it just definitely looks neater. Just, it's just nice not to have clutter everywhere. I'm just trying to clear things out at the moment, declutter my life a bit. So uh, there is PlayStation 4. I'll show you behind the TV in detail in a minute or so, but you can see there Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 above it. Now this is a 43 inch TV and it just about hides both of them. If you go on tippy 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 toes, you can see the top of the PlayStation 4 there. But when you're just at normal height and sitting down, you can see it looks good. I've just sat on the controller there. <laughs> right, so uh, yeah, let me show you behind the TV. Well, actually, let me show you the three different things working and then I'll show you behind the TV. Okay, so here we have the PlayStation 4. See that's working perfectly. I've also connected up the USB headset and I'll show you that in a minute. So that's connected up as well. Let's go to Xbox. So go to input, go to Xbox. And now get the controller and you can see that the Xbox is working here fine. Obviously it's all gonna work perfect. All I've done is stored the consoles in a different position. Switch I've done a little bit more to. So I'll show you the switch behind the TV in a minute. But uh, if you look here, what I've done with the switch is I've just used the remains of uh, broken up switches because I don't need it as a switch. I'm just gonna have it as purely a docked system. So uh, yeah, let's show you the switch to begin with. So with the switch, it's just stuck underneath here and you can see it just peeping out at the bottom there. So you turn it on from here and then I've got my game card reader here. So you can still do your little game cards just like that there. Yeah. So when I put it in there, you will see it will go to uh, solid. There we go. So now with this one, it's completely stripped out. There's no screen, there's no touch screen on it. There's nothing on the front at all. It's just a carcass. And I haven't even got speakers connected to it. All I've got is the motherboard, heat pipe, and also the game card reader as well. And obviously I need to power on and off by that switch there. But there's uh, nothing else to that. So with this now, I won't be able to charge the Joy-Cons on it, but that's not a problem for me because I'm just gonna be using a pro controller. If my kids have friends over and they wanna play, for example, Mario Kart or something, then I will just charge the Joy-Cons on another switch that I have. Or if you haven't got that luxury, then you can always buy Joy-Con chargers. So it's not, uh, that's not actually a big deal. So with this TV here, it's a swivel TV. So I've actually got plenty of room out the back of it. So even with nothing, connected behind here, the TV always sits a bit away from the wall because the idea is, is that you can move it out and for example, you can swivel it around to different positions that you want to swivel it around to. So uh, I've got plenty of room behind. So as you can see, I've stuck the switch down behind here. Now to save room, I've just used a portable dock and I'm actually just using a normal USB power supply. You could use a proper Nintendo Switch charger. It's just that I haven't actually got any spare at this moment. And if it bricks, to me, it's not such a big deal because then it just gives me more content to film 
another switch repair video. But hopefully it won't brick, and if it does, at least I'll have a bit more info of possibly why it bricks, you know, does it happen during updates and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, that is it there. I've still got access to my little SD card and stuff. So really happy with that there, and that's not gonna overheat or anything. That's fine to live like that permanently. So the switch, in my opinion, has been a bit of success. Now, if you've wondered what I've used to connect things like this, and also what I've used to connect my transmitter there, what I've used is this stuff here. So it's 3M tape, VHB. I think that stands for very high bond. And it's about 13 power for a reel off three meters. But it really is very strong. So you put it on, and then you're not really supposed to put any weight on it for I think it was about 19 hours or something. But the things that I'm sticking are not really heavy things anyway. So now, that's not going anywhere. You know, that really is on there nice and securely. So you can see that everything comes through just this brush plate here. And I have got all these spare HDMI cables going to that cupboard in the kitchen, but they're no good to me now, unless I wanna put something maybe like a, a DVD player or something like that, but I'm not using any of that at the moment. So that would work fine for that. But unfortunately, when it comes to the consoles, that's. Uh, that's not an option. Now, when it comes to the Xbox and PlayStation, there's, uh, this is really nice. Now, you could do your own system of sticking it to the wall. You could just do things like little wall plugs, and then you get some wire, and you could wrap it round. So do wall plug, wall plug, wall plug up here with screws in, and then get wire, wrap them all the way around, and that would be okay. But if you're willing to spend a bit of money, other people have done all the hard work for you. So if you have a look here, can you see on the bottom of the Xbox One, there's a little clamp here that goes to here and this runs up the back of it and then it comes out the top here and then there's two little screws to secure it in and then on the PlayStation 4 it's this bracket that goes along here and you can see the bracket here that runs nearly the full length of it and the idea is can you see the PlayStation slides in and out of the bracket so once you take those cables out the back the whole PlayStation can just pull straight out so I'm just going to show you the box for this bracket here and then you'll understand exactly what it what I mean so this is it here I think both of the ones were about, I think they were just under £20 each. I think it might have been £16 and one was £18. But I can put the prices up on screen. But you have to get the mount for your particular one. So the Xbox One X would be different than the Xbox One S. The PlayStation 4 Slim is going to be different than the Pro and the standard PlayStation 4. But if you have a look here, you can see it's just this shape bracket. And then your Xbox just slides into it via these little grooves. So if you have a look at the instructions, you can see here that... This is what it looks like here, and then basically you just uh, mark up, up on the wall where you want it to go, drill, and then you can just put your screws in, and then your Xbox will just slide right into it like this, so it's really good. And then the other one was this make here. And what's interesting on this one is, let's say now I wanted mine up on the wall, which is fair enough because it's all everything's hidden behind it, but let's say if you did have your TV just on a stand, and you still didn't want, for example, your PlayStation 4 showing, then you know at the back of TVs now, they have standard holes for these fittings. So uh, is it Visa or what well, is V-E-S-A, however you pronounce that. And this one is a 20 by 20. So basically it's 20 centimeters between here and here, and also here and here there, which would be the same obviously as 200 millimeters. And basically what you can do is you can fit this mount to the back. See here, it says here, look, uh, install it in three simple steps. V-set installation, skip to step three, no drilling required. So all you would have to do is attach the bracket to the back of your TV, and then your PlayStation 4 could just sit straight on the back of your TV. Again, hiding all the cables away. So I think that's quite a nice idea. But uh, yeah, really, really straightforward. So this is actually locked into place with two little screws. This one slides straight in, so I'm really happy with it. Now I've got a little bit of filming of when I took this one out of the box, so let me just show you that. So here it is, it's a different design than the Xbox One X one. You can see at the corners there that we have little backstops to stop the PlayStation from sliding out that way. It's also got six mounting holes, I just use one hole in each corner, and you can have it in either orientation. Yeah, so there we have it. And obviously discs and everything are gonna be working fine. Now my only slight concern is that the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Slim are both made to either work horizontal or vertical. But when they're in the vertical plane, 
they're actually the other way around. So the, the mount for this one is on this side and the mount for this one is this side. So ideally these two should have been over this side of the TV. The problem is I've got all my cables over this side so there's not gonna be enough room to fit it this way. So I've had to put them like the wrong way up. But I'm thinking, is that really gonna make a difference? If the disc is designed to work vertically, does it matter whether it's this way around or in that orientation? I can't see that making a difference. If you do know that, then add it to the comments below, but you can see that this isn't designed to be uh, that way up. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with it though. Uh, what else? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, airflow and everything's gonna be fine. There's still plenty of airflow out the back here anyway. So yes, the bracket's in the way, but this is made out of plastic and metal. That's never gonna get hot enough to melt. I've got a bit of airflow through here. I'm not gonna have them both on at the same time because they're off the same TV. So I think it's all good. And last thing is USB. So annoyingly, with the PlayStation 4 Slim, there's no USBs out the back, so I'm having to use them out the front. But what I've done is, rather than having the cables draped across here if you wanna charge your controller, or if you want to, for example, just and, uh, sync up your controller on your PlayStation 4. Rather than having it coming out from here going down to the settee, I've run them down to that little brush plate here. So if you have a look, this one here is to feed this little uh, A50 the Astro headset thing. And then this one here actually runs down, goes in through the brush plate again. With the Xbox, I've got a USB cable here that goes through the brush plate, and then they come up down there. So I'll show you that working in a minute. And also, obviously, you could just use it on Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is gonna be the easiest way, but with me, I have actually got everything wired up for a network. So I've got my Cat6 cables going in here and here. And now, for example, because it's a wired network, I'm gonna be getting the full speed, which is over 300. Uh, megabits per second into this area here. So I'm happy with that. Now let me just show you these little connections here on the USB cable. I've just got it on the Xbox at the moment and you can see it's moving around here. Now let's take the batteries out of here just to show you it working as a USB cable. So obviously it's not gonna work now, but if I bring it down to here, what I've done is the two USB cables I've got marked up as Xbox and PlayStation. So this one says PlayStation 4, this one says Xbox One. So let's get our charging cable and plug it into the Xbox One. Plug it in here and you will see it will sync up. So it's just a neater way to have it across the floor rather than hanging down from the TV. And now if you have a look up here, you will now see that it's working. Again, even though there's no batteries in it. So again, I think I'm really, I'm really happy with how it's gone. And I think rather than messing around trying to get cables and sticking your console or gluing it somehow to the wall, Getting those brackets, in my opinion, is a complete and utter winner. And now I am much happier with how that has gone because the TV sticking, it doesn't stick any bit more away from the wall because it's a swivel bracket. Obviously, if you haven't got a swivel bracket, you're not gonna have the room to fit consoles behind it. But those swivel bra brackets take up quite a bit of room. It's dead space anyway. So now, that is just, uh, that is just ideal. So yeah, really happy with it. So that is it for this video. Hopefully it's given you a few ideas if you do want to declutter or if you're getting pressure from your other half to declutter and neaten up your games room or the main room where you have your consoles. Then uh, yeah, maybe you can spend a bit of money, spend a bit of time and your setup will become hopefully a bit neater. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more videos. Take care. Bye now.